In this video we will discuss about patient positioning, bed mobility and transfer. This is the fifth part of our course. In the previous lectures we discussed about the basics of physical therapy, introduction to electrotherapy, basic therapeutic exercises and presentation of common musculoskeletal disorders and their physical therapy management. Links of all these videos are mentioned in the description box. Let's come to our topic. Patient positioning involves properly maintaining a patient's neutral body alignment by preventing hyperextension and extreme lateral rotation to prevent complications of immobility and injury. Goals of patient positioning it should provide comfort and safety to patient. Proper positioning promotes comfort by preventing nerve damage and by preventing unnecessary extension or rotation of the body, support the patient's airway and maintain the circulation. Guidelines for patient positioning. Explain the procedure to the patient, provide explanation to the client, on why his or her position has been changed and how it will be done. Encourage client to assist as much as possible. Determine if the client can fully or partially assist. Clients that can assist will save strain on the therapist. Get adequate help. When planning to move or reposition the client, ask help from other caregivers. Positioning may not be a one-person task. Use mechanical aids, bed boards, slide boards, pillows, patient lifts and slings can facilitate ease of changing positions. Frequent position changes. Note that any position, correct or incorrect, can be detrimental to the patient if maintained for a long period. Repositioning the patient every two hours helps prevent complications like pressure ulcers and skin breakdown. Precautions when moving patients lift rather than slide to prevent friction that can abrade the skin, making it more prone to skin breakdown. Observe good body mechanics for you and your patient's safety. Position yourself close to the client. Avoid twisting your back, neck, and pelvis by keeping them aligned. Flex your knees and keep feet wide apart. Use your arms and legs and not your back. Common patient positions. Supine position or dorsal recumbent is where the patient lies flat on the back with head and shoulders slightly elevated using a pillow unless contraindicated, for example, in spinal anesthesia, spinal surgery. The lower extremities moderately flexed and rotated outward. It is employed in the application of obstetrical forceps, repair of lesions following perturition, vaginal examination, and bimanual palpation. Fowler's position, also known as semi-sitting position, is a bed position wherein the head of the bed is elevated 45 to 60 degrees. Variations of Fowler's position include low Fowler's 15 to 30 degrees, semi Fowler's 30 to 45 degrees and high Fowler's nearly vertical. This position promotes lung expansion. Fowler's position is used for patients who have difficulty breathing because in this position, gravity pulls the diaphragm downward allowing greater chest and lung expansion. Orthopneic or tripod position places the patient in a sitting position or on the side of the bed with an overbed table in front to lean on and several pillows on the table to rest on. This position promotes maximum lung expansion. Patients who are having difficulty breathing are often placed in this position because it allows maximum expansion of the chest. Helps in exhaling. 
Orthopneic position is particularly helpful to patients who have problems in exhaling because they can press the lower part of the chest against the edge of the overbed table. Prone position. In prone position, the patient lies on the abdomen with head turned to one side and the hips are not flexed. Extension of hips and knee joints. Prone position is the only bed position that allows full extension of the hip and knee joints. It also helps to prevent flexion contractures of the hips and knees. Drainage of secretions. Prone position also promotes drainage from the mouth and useful for clients who are unconscious or those recover from surgery of the mouth or throat. When the patient lies prone produces marked lordosis of forward curvature of the spine, thus contraindicated for patients with spinal problems. Prone position should only be used when the client's back is correctly aligned. Lateral position. In lateral or side-lying position, the patient lies on one side of the body, with the top leg in front of the bottom leg, and the hip and knee flexed. Flexing the top hip and knee and placing this leg in front of the body creates a wider, triangular base of support and achieves greater stability. In this position, most of the body weight is distributed to the lateral aspect of the lower scapula, the lateral aspect of the ilium, and the greater trochanter of the femur. This position relieves pressure on the sacrum and heels. Sims position or semi-prone position is when the patient assumes a posture halfway between the lateral and the prone positions. The lower arm is positioned behind the client and the upper arm is flexed at the shoulder and the elbow. The upper leg is more acutely flexed at both the hip and the knee than is the lower one. This position prevents aspiration of fluids. Sims may be used for unconscious clients because it facilitates drainage from the mouth and prevents aspiration of fluids. It reduces lower body pressure. It is also used for paralyzed clients because it reduces pressure over the sacrum and greater trochanter of the hip. Trendelenburg's position. It involves lowering the head of the bed and raising the foot of the bed of the patient. The patient's arms should be tucked at their sides. Hypertensive patients can benefit from this position because it promotes venous return. Trendelenburg's position is used to provide postural drainage of the basal lung lobes. Reverse Trendelenburg's, it is a patient position wherein the, the head of the bed is elevated, with the foot of the bed down. It is the opposite of Trendelenburg's position. Reverse Trendelenburg is often used for patients with gastrointestinal problems as it helps minimize esophageal reflux. This position promotes stomach emptying and prevents reflux for clients with hiatal hernia. Bed mobility. Bed mobility is the ability to perform specific motions while in bed. The term bed mobility refers to activities such as scooting in bed, rolling turning from lying on one's back to side lying, side lying to sitting, and sitting to lying down. Why bed mobility is important. Our bodies are meant to move. If you are not able to move well in bed, your body may suffer from disuse atrophy or a wasting away of muscular strength. This can lead to increased difficulty with mobility. Not being able to move in bed can also lead to pressure ulcers especially if the patients are severely deconditioned and remain in one position for a long period of time. The skin may start to break down, leading to painful wounds that need specialized care to heal. 
Being able to move properly in bed can help prevent pressure ulcers. Exercises to improve bed mobility. Various exercises can be performed to improve bed mobility. Before starting any exercise for your bed mobility, talk to your doctor to ensure that exercise is safe for you to do. Exercises may include glute sets, straight leg raises, bridges, short arc quads, ankle pumps, lower trunk rotation and upper extremity exercises. Bed mobility and transfers. Bed mobility and transfers involves rolling, mobilizing from supine to long sitting, unsupported sitting, vertical lifting, and transferring. First step is rolling. The leg closest to the edge of the bed can be straight or bent depending on which is more comfortable for the patient. Bend the opposite hip and knee of the patient. For example, you should bend the patient's right hip and knee if getting the patient out on the left side of the bed. Place your hands behind the patient's shoulder and hip or thigh on the far side. The patient should always roll toward you not away from you. Assist the patient in rolling toward you and have them use their opposite arm to reach across their body into a sideline position. The patient should place their arms in a position that is comfortable for them. However, having the arms positioned as shown in this picture, allows the patient to use their arms and upper body strength to help push up to a seated position. The patient should now be lying, on their side, with hips and knees bent. Mobilizing from supine to long sitting. Have the patient move their legs off the edge of the bed. If needed, you can assist the patient to move their legs from behind their knee. The patient can use both arms to push up to help achieve a sitting position. If needed, assist the patient to achieve a sitting position by placing one arm behind their shoulder. The other arm could be placed behind the other shoulder, supporting their trunk, or on the patient's pelvis. Remember one thing while assisting the patient, perform the activity in a continuous smooth motion. Always take your time, do not rush. Unsupported sitting can either be short sitting, with legs over the edge of the bed, or long sitting, with legs straight. Sitting to standing. To help the patient move from a sitting position on the bed to a standing position, first assist the patient to scoot to the edge of the bed. With you standing in front of the seated patient, the patient leans to one side, while you support the shoulder on that same side. With your other arm help the patient shift the hip forward. This process would be alternately repeated on the opposite side. Make sure the patient's feet are flat on the floor and he or she sits for a few seconds or minutes as needed before leaning forward to be assisted to a standing position. If the patient is preparing for standing, have them lean forward keeping both their hands flat on the bed or on their lap to assist with pushing off the bed during the transition from sit to stand, several assistive devices can be used that assist the patient in standing. Here is the demonstration of how to move the elderly people with complete paralysis from bed to wheelchair. Recline the wheelchair into a lying down position. Remove the armrest before preparing the elderly for transfer. Roll the elderly on their side and place the shifting mat under them. Roll the elderly back onto their back and adjust them so they are on the center of the mat. Bring the reclined wheelchair as close to the bed as possible. The caregiver can use their own body to hold the wheelchair in place whilst they slide the user onto the wheelchair. 
Wheelchair to bed transfer. Recline the wheelchair into the lying down position with the armrest removed on the side next to the bed and lay the shifting mat out on the bed. Lift the leg of the elderly user closest to the bed. The caregiver should roll the user towards themselves and slide the mat under the elderly. Lifting the elderly's legs onto the bed first will make it easier to shift the rest of their body onto the bed. Move the wheelchair away from the bed. Position the elderly in the middle of the bed and carefully remove the shifting mat from under them. I hope this video will be beneficial for you. In the next and the last part of our course, we will discuss about gait training and assistive devices. Hit the subscribe button and share your reviews about the video. Thank you.